Hey there, everybody. George Lemie here from CE Tranquility, and welcome to another episode of Album Homework Assignment. Sunday morning, so gather around, SOT Heathens, because we have a great matchup. In the co-captain's chairs today, we have the one you guys call the king, Mr. Chris Allo. And the reason I'm here, the other chair has the boss, Mr. Pete Pardo. What's up, guys? What's going on, George? What's happening, George? What's going on, What's going on Chris? That's a good this word. Is- Simon time. Yeah, well, you, everybody knows how this works. Uh, you guys have had a week or two with these albums. Uh, let's kick it alphabetically. Let's let's hear from Chris. W- what album did Pete give you? All right, Pete gave me the uh, new Ghost Record, uh, Impera. I believe is that. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yep. Uh, which was released uh, earlier this year, and um, it was interesting. Uh, just just go into it, George. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was interesting uh, for me. I, I'll just give a, a brief background, Pete. I know I've talked about this before, and, and George. Um, I was an early uh, Ghost fan. Uh, long story short, I, I flew to Texas to interview Iron Maiden and for the Final Frontier record. And uh, Goots, who was the editor from Rock Hard Magazine, was like, this record sucks because they have three guitarists and... Uh, they're not doing anything with, with, with three guitarists. You want to hear a good three guitar band? Listen to The Devil's Blood. So I got The Devil's Blood and I loved it. I got it from Rock Fantasy. And then I ran and then I ran into Steve Keeler and Ryan Scow. I believe it was an immortal show in 2000, late 2010. And I was like, hey man, that Devil's Blood was great. Well, like any other bands are like it. And uh, Ryan and uh, Steve recommended Ghost. So I went out and bought it. And then I had to look up the date uh, in 2011. Ghost came over for two. Their, their U.S. tour was two gigs, Maryland Death Fest. And on June 1st, 2011, they played uh, the, the basement of Webster Hall. It was me and my buddy Marcos, and they were fucking amazing. They came out and they played the whole first album. They pulled an Alice Cooper. Papa didn't say anything in between songs. Uh, they were like just dark and mysterious. Nobody knew anything about them. And I thought that was really cool. And I, I loved them. And on subsequent releases, they, you know, started to alter their sound. And the, this Papa character uh, started to evolve. Uh, and I saw them multiple times. Hell, I saw them three times alone opening for Iron Maiden. Uh, but the, for me, the straw that broke the camel's back was I had tickets for them May 15th, 2018. They did, uh, this was the prequel tour, but before the album came out, they did two sets and I bought tickets for it. And uh, they played the Capitol Theater in Port Chester. I'm trying to make this as quick as possible. Pete, I know I told you the story before. I come out and uh, the Papa character is gone. He comes out and he's like a shriveled up old Jewish man or a shriveled up old Italian guy. And the cool black and white makeup is gone and he's literally an old Jewish guy in a tuxedo. He's got like a mask that makes him look like an old man. And he's cracking like dad jokes, like the worst schmaltzy dad jokes ever. Now, when he did the black and white makeup, like previously, he would kind of switch it. Like he did half the show as regular Papa and half the show as like a raccoon skull thing and with a wig. And he did the schmaltzy jokes, but at least he still had the makeup. Like this thing fucking killed me. I was like, wait, this is like I go see King Diamond and I and I come out and I go to the show and he's Father Guido Sarducci. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, this is fucking horrendous. I literally, I had front row on the balcony. I wanted to throw myself off the balcony because I went with friends so I couldn't leave. I sat through the whole first set of watching Papa crack jokes while all these kids, all these fucking kids are in the audience wearing a black and white makeup like at a kiss show but they were watching this, he's old man. Like, this is fucking ridiculous. Second set, I'm like, all right, second set, he's gonna come out with the makeup? Nope, still come out looking like Father Guido Sarducci from, from Saturday Night Live. I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. So right then and there, I'm like, fuck you. I'm out of ghost, they, they, they are non-existent to me. Until two weeks ago when Pete says, hey, let's review this record. So I listened to it, I tried to be, as uh, open-minded as I could, um, but it was tough, man. Yeah, like the opening track, Kaiserion, whatever that is, 
oh man it's just it's super catchy super 80 sounding like everything is like super processed and just like like they're just trying to sound like um 80s synth pop but not totally because sometimes there's still a little bit heavy guitars or a pounding drum here and there but it kind of reminded me of that band that i don't really know anything about but they love the 80s and they have very funny videos that band called gunship uh, you, you i'm sure you guys heard of them um but that's kind of what they reminded me they do like videos and it, it, everything sounds like it's like an 80 it should be in an 80s movie like war games and they do these videos that will have like you know 50 million views but uh, i don't know if they're a real band if they tour if they do records i don't know anything about them but i've seen a couple videos and i'm like that's kind of funny uh second song spillways it had these super syrupy 80s keyboards at the beginning reminded me of urgent just the keyboards in the beginning but just super melodic super poppy third track little miss sunshine that one i kind of liked it was kind of slower and heavier kind of a foot stomper not bad i think it's the best song on the record uh hunter's moon was a song after that not a terrible song but just vocals just big soaring melodic 80s vocals just ruined it for me although there was some good guitar riffs in it um watcher in the sky had a, a good chugging riff through it um but still like super poppy and 80 sounding then there was a song uh called 20s uh i wrote it's so sugary it's giving me a headache in the 20s <laughs> like that <laughs> Whatever he's saying in the twenties, there were there were bennies, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. And then the last song I wrote down, there's a couple songs after us, but uh, "Darkness at the Heart of My Love." I wrote four words, quasi ballad. I quit. So that's it. I listened to the whole thing once, and then I tried the second time to make make some notes, and that's as far as I made it. It's fucking garbage. Any Ghost fans out there, I, I hope you like it. This band is fucking dead to me. They've been dead since 2018. Uh, I'll answer the question right now. I wouldn't stream it. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't listen to it for free. If Ghost played again across the street from my house, I wouldn't fucking go. Fuck those guys. They are totally lame posers. I don't give a fuck what they do. Uh, and that's it. I hate them. They're dead to me. And that's, that's, that's my review. But the and here's the thing. I went back then. I'm like, maybe I'm being too critical. So I went back and I listened to the first record. I'm like, man, this fucking record is really good. I'm like, this this to me sounds like, you know, like everybody says, mix a Blue Oyster Cult with Merciful Fate. It's that 70s retro rock. Everything sounds natural and warm. And that oh, everything is fucking Lucifer and Satan and all that. And that, of course, all that stuff is gone now because... They want the big bucks. They want the Metallica money. I mean, I was shocked when they moved into arenas, you know, on that prequel record. I'm like, no way. And well, what did I know? Yeah. I was I'm the, I'm the idiot that's pissed they he came out looking like like an old Italian fucking zip. Well, you know. So yeah. So that that's my review. I got a weird history with that band. I like you. I like the debut. And then uh, I didn't care for the follow up that much. No, nope, me neither. I checked back in. I liked Meliora quite a bit. Same. I, I liked the third one. Good songwriting. And then when I heard prequel, I was like, what is this? Yeah. I, I gave it a fair shot because my best friend, he loves it. And I just, I tried to like it. I like probably the first couple songs and the rest of it, I just thought was very, very weak. So yeah. I, I probably, I only heard the radio songs from this one, but I think I'm going to stay away from it based on your review. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know if Pete liked it, but I I, I do I, like I, it, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. People hey, listen, I could see why some people would like it. I mean, it is super catchy. It's along the lines of prequel, right? I mean, yeah, from from what I heard from that, because I actually never heard. I only heard the prequel uh, songs live, and then I did hear that song "Rats," you know, on on the radio and on Sirius XM. Um, so yeah, this was along that along those lines. That's to me when the they started to like turn up the eighties sound, but this, to me, this is even more. Oh yeah. yeah. 
that's what they're into, right? That's, yeah. that's kind of what they're trying to capture here. So yeah, I get it. It's not for everybody. I, I like it. I think it's it's catchy stuff. It's just heavy enough. Um, but it is it, it's I don't listen to ghosts to be like musically inspired, right? It's to me, it's just enjoyment. It's the pure enjoyment. And uh, you know, if I want anything more adventurous, I'm not listening to them. But uh, I, you know, I get in the mood to hear their their stuff every so often. So I dig it, but I get how people don't. Yeah. It so. seems like they're putting the vocals out front, and I don't think he's a strong vocalist. He's okay, but I don't, can he carry songs? Not for me. I don't know. He writes great vocal melodies. Whether he's you know the best at singing them, I guess remains to be seen. But he, he this guy knows how to write a catchy tune that he does. Tobias is not an idiot. He knows what he's doing. And I think uh, they got Frederick Atkinson from Opeth plays most, I don't know about most, but a good chunk of uh, lead guitar work on the album. And he's amazing. So every time he's playing, you know him like within two seconds of the 10. So, which I think was a good gift for them. Sure, all yeah, those they're, they're guys, doing, they all know each other, right? So they're doing something right. Cause they're, you know, they're, they're yeah. selling a shit ton of t-shirts and concert tickets. Yep. All right. Well, we're not to this guy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we, we do not have a sale there. Uh, Let's check in with Pete. Uh, what album did Chris give you, and did it go any better? All right. So Chris gave me uh, an album from 1982 from The Misfits, Walk Among Us. So this, of course, uh, one of only two studio albums, Chris, full length, right? I Technically, guess. yeah. Only only two studio albums. They yeah. have some a ton of posthumous releases. Yeah. Um, but technically, only two studio records while they were uh, an outfit. And again, you know, 13 songs, about 25 minutes long. So pretty much kind of like an EP under normal standards. But uh, but 13 songs is not really an EP. It's just EP. although, you know, if you go if you remember, Pete, you go back to that time. Yeah, 30 was, minutes, 35 like, minutes. Right? Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we talked a lot about Rainbow Rising. How long is Rainbow Rising? Right. 20 something minutes. You're just or 30. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not that long. Rain yeah. and Blood is uh, what 25 minutes, 28 minutes. Yeah, true, true. Uh, and of course, I guess this is the classic lineup of the band. So Glenn Danzig on vocals and other assorted things here and there. Of course, we would know him from his own band, Danzig. Uh, Jerry Only on bass, Doyle on guitars, and Arthur Googie, right? Arthur Googie oh, yeah, on drums. So uh, 13 tracks. So uh, I, I kind of broke this down song by song here. And uh, so I'll, I'll kickstart with 20 Eyes. Now, I, I tried, you know, I like Danzig. Uh, the band Danzig. At least I liked like the first half of their career, like the first like four or five albums I dig. Uh, I have, I've never listened to a Misfits album before. I've heard songs here and there, obviously, because I, I think if you're at all into, you know, heavy music or rock and roll over the last 40 years, you've probably heard a Misfits song or two, but I've never actually listen to a full album and i like horror movies right and horror stuff so but i'm not a punk fan but i do love metal so i'm like all right there's got to be i'm sure that there's an opening here for me then i kind of went in with that kind of mindset so the first song 20 eyes uh kind of catchy you know i can i can kind of get into the the riffs and things on this album for the most part um i tend to not like gang style vocals and there's a ton of them on this album so and it starts off right in this first song so i wasn't crazy about that but the song is a good song i kind of dig it right so track two i turned into a marsh and i love the titles of these songs i think they're they're just lots of fun uh this is pretty heavy riffs are pretty big and crushing um i found throughout this album that i don't like Glenn's vocals as much in this band as I do in his own band. Again, we're talking a decade before, right? So, and it's a different style of music. So I guess I kind of understand that, but I do like this song. I turned to a Marsh it's one of my favorites on the album. It's pretty good. And again, most of these songs are a minute and a half, two minutes tops, right? Nothing here is lengthy at all. Uh, then you got all hell breaks loose, uh, fast and frantic, very much like a punk song kind of takes me back to like the Sex Pistols thing, you know, from the mid late 60s. Uh, I'm not crazy about the riffs. I don't really like the the scat kind of singing with the gang back of backup vocals on this. So not one of my favorite tracks on the album. Uh, Vampira, kind of like this one. Um, some cool guitar licks from Doyle on this one. Um, there is a, a very 
big like I guess this whole album is like a simplicity to this album that oh, yeah. kind of is not really my thing. But again, that's usually what I complain about punk punk music. It, it's very very simple, but that's the purpose of it, right? So uh, Nike a go go. Uh, <laughs> Reminds me of something you'd hear on one of those like teenage beach films, right? Beach blanket, bingo, Gidget, all that kind of stuff. Um, but done later on, you know, obviously, and done, you know, with a punk aesthetic as opposed to, you know, the kind of late 50s, early 60s rock and roll. Um, did not like the song at all. Um, Hate Breeders. Kind of more of the same for me. Uh, at this point, we're almost halfway through the album. And to me, a lot of these songs are starting to sound the same. And I'm, I'm trying desperately to kind of pick them apart from each other. Uh, Mommy, Can I Go Out and Kill Tonight? Love the title. Uh, big bass and guitar riffs. Angrier song, really fast. Um, I like the intensity on this song. I don't like his vocals. I'm like, one of the things that perplexed me so much about this album is like, I expected to like his vocals because I generally like his vocal style. I don't like his singing on this album. Is it just me, Chris? Or is it like... It's, well, just... it's, a, it's a very different style. Yeah, of course, like totally. you said, because it, the music is very different. Yeah, big time. But I, I kind of, I like the song itself. Uh, Mommy, can I go out and kill tonight? Um, Night of the Living Dead, uh, pretty catchy, fun. Obviously, the, the some of these lyrics are silly, but I can appreciate them because I kind of like the whole horror thing. So I kind of like that. Um, so that's not a bad song. Uh, Skulls, totally different. Nice and heavy, slower kind of mid-paced. I don't mind that one at all. I think that's pretty good. Uh, Violent World is up next. Uh, kind of reminded me of a couple of the other songs I've already heard on here. Devil's Whorehouse, great title. Um, big fat groove on this. Kind of one of those like kind of fist pumping songs. I like this. Another one of my favorite tracks on the album. Uh, Astro Zombies, kind of catchy. Kind of reminded me of the Ramones a little bit which is, I don't really like the Ramones. So that's not really my thing, but it is kind of catchy. And then uh, Brain Eaters is just absolutely bizarre. It sounds like everybody's just like drunk or tripping on acid and everybody's just singing and playing whatever they want. It just sounds like a lot of cacophony on that. So um, so that's, that's the last track. That's the one song on the record that I really don't like. Yeah, it's just, it makes no sense. It's like all over the place. And I'm like, God, what is going on here? So, um, so yeah, so 13 songs, 25 minutes. Um, I think after I listened to this a couple of times, it's like much of what I'm complaining about is what I generally complain about punk music. And I'm, I, everybody knows I'm not a fan of punk at all. Uh, I, I was, like I said before, I was astounded at how much I disliked his vocals on here. And I like a lot of the guitar riffs on here. I just found that they were like kind of the same one song after song after song. And I get, I, I totally get how a lot of people like this and can get into the anthemic nature of a lot of these songs. And it is a fun album. And maybe I just, you know, maybe Pete's just being a Debbie Downer and, and not just saying, you know, fuck it, just have fun with this, because I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, but I just, to me, it didn't have a lot of appeal. And I, I went into it thinking, I got to love this, right? I mean, I should love it. It's like, it's a band I probably, I'm surprised I never really listened to. Um, but I, I felt like after two or three songs in, I felt like I had heard the whole album already. And by the time I got through it, I kind of felt like half the album was kind of the same song repeated over and over again with different titles and a little different lyrics. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too harsh on it. I don't know. But um, possibly too, it's a kind of the kind of album that you need to have heard in its time and place and you can't really doesn't translate well going back yeah i mean you know martin talks about that all the time martin popoff he says it's you know he, he always talks about these you had to be there type of albums right yeah. and maybe because i ignored this and stuff like this for so many years me trying to go back to it now after you know all these years all i've listened to all i'm into now this to me i listen to this i'm like this does not compute in this brain and my brain is just telling me that I know you're supposed to like this and you should like this and you should have fun with it. And I'm just kind of like, I'm not, you know, I want to, but I'm just not. So I don't know. Well, I think we know where it's going, but would you buy it? <laughs> would you stream it? Or are you just going to forget this? I will, I will just forget it. And it's like, I, and you probably won't meet anybody else on the street who would just say that. Yeah. The, the, the misfits, ah, forget them. Right. I feel bad because Chris is my buddy. I know how much. That's okay. Listen, it's, it's like, all what you like, Pete. It's, yeah. it's all what you like. Yeah. But I, I will say, though, you know, 
I'm, I'm 56 years old. I've never really listened to this band. At some fucking point in my life, I needed to, right? So I'm glad I did. Um, I, I wish I came away with a different response, but um, you know, what are you gonna do? You like what you like, right? That's, That's it. Good. I think some people would be interested with you guys being friends for so long, how you approached picking albums for each other. Did you go to things you knew would challenge the other guy? Did, uh, how did you come about it? Well, here's it. So I, I, I know how much he loves the Misfits and, and Glenn Danzig. And I've been thinking for age, you know, listening to Chris talk about them for years. I was always, I've always been like, God, how have I never listened to this band? So when I, you know, talked to him about doing this, this episode, I was like, you know what? Like, I actually suggested to him. I was like, you love the Misfits. I don't know jack shit about them. I would like to find out about them. Recommend, pick one of their albums for me to listen to. Okay. That's how that worked. Right. And, and you know, one of the, my thinking was one of the posthumous records uh, Pete might have liked better, but you know, I was like, all right, well, Walk Among Us is the traditional Misfits studio album. It's a 40th anniversary. I mean, they're they're headlining Riot Fest this September, and they're going to play this album from start to finish and, and, and headline in front of 50,000 people. So I was like, all right, that's that's the record to give Pete. Yeah. And you thought of Ghost how? Oh, so with Ghost, um... <laughs> I know how much he hates recent Ghost, right? And uh, which, I, which I is ironic, because again, it's a it's a band I loved early. You know, the first couple of years they were together, six seven years. Yeah, and and I quite frankly, I I dig the album. So I I my guess was that he was probably going to not bother listening to this, even though everybody's which, talking about it. Which so is true. Like, well, let me give him the opportunity then to go and check it out. He might hate it, and that's fine. Um, but I was, you know, I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe there's some stuff on there he might dig, but it didn't turn out that way. That's okay. And I'll be honest, Pete, like, like shout out to, to Sydney, who does Hudson Valley Squares. Like, she was like, oh, my God, it's the greatest fucking record. And then I almost listened to it, and then I'm like, oh, fuck it. Um, but I'll be honest, I tried to separate but I couldn't, and and if I didn't, I I was trying to uh, separate it so much. I was like, all right, well, if I didn't have a, an axe to grind with this band, would I like this record? And I think I would like it more if it wasn't a band that I liked, and then I felt completely did a one eighty on me. Um, but it was it, it was impossible to listen to it with with fresh ears. Like I just kept comparing it to that first record and I kept comparing my last concert experience, you know, to the first concert experience. And again, it was like completely, completely different bands. And I, I would assume he's, st he's still doing the same shtick. Although I think he's doing the black and white makeup again, I think. I think so. Yeah. Again, not that I'm, you know, unless, unless they're, opening again for an Iron Maiden or somebody else like that, which now they're so big, they probably, you know, I'll probably never see them again. <laughs> yeah, like if you, yeah, you won't bother going to see them headlines, so. No, yeah. no, and if they played a festival, I would, unless I was walking past the stage to get a hot dog or a beer, yeah, I would not, uh, I wouldn't check them out. Yeah. Oh, well, it's all right. Their fans too. It's kind of hard not to backlash against the band because their fans, they think they're like so genius that if you don't, oh, yeah. they're like, "What's wrong with you?" I'm like, hey, man, I just don't like it. You know? <laughs> Although it's funny because like I, one of the comments uh, that I saw on on the new because I I would not buy this record. I had to listen to it on YouTube. One of the comments that somebody posted on YouTube was like, "Oh yeah, Ghost. This band has already had five lead singers." And it's like, no. And then somebody else posted, no, you idiot. It's the same guy just wearing different makeup and costumes. But I'm like, all right, people are just so, you know, the, the whole spectrum of, of all over the place on, on this band. But yeah, it's their, their fans definitely do. Some of them seem to me kind of seem like Kiss or Rush fans in that they're just into this band and that's it. Yeah. I mean, I remember... Um, God, this is probably before 2018, so maybe like 2015. I saw them do a headline a headlining show on, I think Meliora or whatever. The Misses and I saw them at uh, at that College Street Music Hall in New Haven. A couple thousand people sold out, 
and it was like a husband and wife and they were sitting next to an, each, each other and they had to be in their 60s these people and I, again i'm going back six or seven years and they were singing every song and like doing these weird hand movements and like every song about lucifer and you know sacrificing the babies and i'm like like do you even know what the fuck you're singing but like they were just so into it and i'm like wow like that was one of those like wow this is a really weird concert experience and that was seven years ago i'm sure it's I'm sure it's even worse now although they seem to have dropped the the, the satan gimmick from oh, yeah, at totally. least from the lyrics anyway yeah my impression like when i reviewed when sydney and i reviewed the new cd a couple months ago like based on reading a lot of the comments and a lot of people watch that video a lot of people commented on it it's like it seems like older rock fans like in our age group a lot of people just think that they're a big gimmick and won't even give them the chance and they're just like ah you know no good and then a lot of uh younger listeners have embraced them as the new like the, the flavor of the month type of thing and they can't do any kiss or, so yeah. so to me it's almost like there's no middle ground with ghost you either you love them or you hate them right yeah and i used to love them but yeah now i hate them you were on the bandwagon now you're off the bandwagon right that's it we should do a show on that <laughs> <laughs> oh cool we we don't have a couple of uh, happy experiences here but at least it was good fun right yeah absolutely I, i'm glad I, i'm glad i gave it a listen uh, you know i wish i would have liked it but part of me is like ah you know what i like enough bands i follow enough bands i'm you know i can drop some here and there that's true can't like everything no that's it, that's it. although it is interesting because you know my view on the older stuff is kind of tainted a little bit but the old the, the that first record is still great All right. Well, I want to thank the guys for putting the work in. I uh, want to thanks everybody for watching. Visit us on the web at www.cetranquility.org. We're on Facebook, but more importantly, we're on YouTube. All the damn time. time. For Chris Allo and Pete Pardo, I'm George Lemie. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And we'll see you soon. Take care, Bye. everybody.